here are a uh, few more interesting knives. Um, this first one actually is a Turkish knife, it's not French, um, but I thought it was kind of an interesting precursor to the ones that I'll talk about. Um, this one is actually made uh, in Turkey, um, in Bursa, which is sort of a well-known uh, knife, knife center. So this, this is a very early, early style knife. Um, in French they call that uh, couteau à deux clous, or uh, two nails, because there was a pivot um, nail, and then there would be another nail up here, which would actually be the stop for the blade. This one doesn't have the, uh, the, second, um, the second pin or nail. It has a little uh, thumb extension here. So this is made actually out of a piece of uh, ram's horn, just a single piece with a slot cut in it. And when you open it up, the stop is actually that little piece here on the end of the blade and you can put your thumb on that and that keeps it from folding on your hand. Um, it's, it's a utilitarian knife. Um, the steel is actually quite good. It takes quite an edge. You can get this shaving sharp. Um, it's kind of an interesting shape, kind of the Navaja style that I'll, uh, that I'll talk about in a second. Um, but this was given to me by uh, a nephew of my wife uh, who lives in Istanbul. Um, but it's kind of a, just a, a neat um, um, early, early style. Okay, this knife here is a uh, Navaja style, which was a, uh, a Spanish uh, design knife that uh, the, uh, the French farmers uh, and people liked quite a bit. Um, typically they're, they're made um, from a uh, cow horn um, for the handle, and the spring mechanism is on the outside of the, uh, of the horn, which helps reinforce it. And, um, Typically these will have a, uh, a locking mechanism, that's what the little ring on here is for, is for pulling up the spring. There's a little hole right there that matches a little pin on the blade, and so when you open this it actually locks locks open. And these, these were very, very popular um, in France and were kind of precursors to the Laiole or Laiole um, style knives in terms of the handle shape. Um, this particular knife, um, they said this style of knife was very popular with the uh, Poilu, or the, uh, the French soldiers in World War I. This is quite a large knife, um, and you can see it's locked open now. To unlock it, you have to pull on the ring and push the blade slightly to unlock it and close it. Um, this particular knife has the, uh, the image and the name Joffre on it, who was a uh, maréchal, a marshal, uh, in the French army, uh, very well beloved, um, who died after World War I. And this is probably a, a commemorative style knife uh, made sometime after World War I uh, for, the, for the French people themselves. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a very pretty, pretty shape and um, there are some French knife makers, Jacques Monge is one, who uh, makes um, styles of these knives with, uh, with small differences. Here's one that Monge makes currently that's uh, called the uh, Nevette, I believe, which, was the, uh, which means shuttle, which was really shaped after the, um, uh, the shuttle that would go back and forth in the... Uh, in a, a weaving loom, um, that was just the shape. It didn't really have anything to do with uh, being used for weaving. Again, it's a, a single piece of horn. The blade opens and locks open. Uh, Mojan's knife knives are very, very well made. They're very well fit, very well finished. Um, very beautiful knives and not, not terribly expensive. Again, you can see the little locking pin on the top and the ring. The spring is on the outside. He uses a screw for the pivot pin so that it is um, irreplaceable. You could tension it. And again, to close it, you have to pull the ring and start the blade closed. It does have a stop on the blade, so it's it's you're not going to snap it shut onto your hand. So these are quite a uh, quite a nice, pretty knife. Um, they make these in different shapes. Um, some some in Damascus steel as well. 
So we had the we had the Navaja style, and uh, that had the locking mechanism in here. And some of the Navaja styles, um, or or later designs, use this same style with the spring on the outside, and they still have this part on it, which is called the mouche in French, which is the end of the spring, uh, literally fly. But um, that that was just the name for that for that part of the uh, for the spring. Now again, this this is on the outside of the handle. Um, this is a locking blade. This is also made by Jacques Monja. Um, it's it's sort of a, an angle faceted handle, also made by cow with cow horn. Um, this particular knife locks open. It has a very pretty shape to it. Um, on this one, instead of having a pull ring, the spring is a little softer, and you actually just use your fingernail to push up on the uh, spring to lift it up high enough to unlock it. So it's very similar to the um, Navajo style with the ring, um, but more of a gentleman's sort of style knife. You still have the uh, the mouche here on the end, which is actually something you can get your fingernail under and lift up to unlock it. So those kind of two styles led to the uh, Laiol or Laiol um, shape, where you've got the handle shape um, that's very much like the Navaja, um, and you've got the uh, the mouche on the end here, but the mouche actually, the locking mechanism sort of went away um, and it was just more decorative. Um, this particular Lyol is really a classic pattern. It's, it has no bolsters, um, the sort of sculpting of the sort of the wing sculpting on the blade. It's cow horn uh, from the Aubrac uh, um, cattle in the region there in Lyol. Um, this particular blade um, has the mark uh, Rossignol, um, which was the, a mark that was used um, by uh, um, a, a manufacturer in Thiers, which is the major area where knives are made in France. Um, this particular maker, I believe, uh, was, was bought out, and I haven't seen any production uh, by them for, for quite some time. Um, again, this this is really a, a sort of a classic shape. Um, the mouche here uh, on the end is uh, smooth. There's no detail to it, and that's really how these Lyol knives started out. There wasn't a lot of decoration. Um, later on, it changed to a, um, a four-leaf clover or other designs, and then uh, just after 1900 is when the first uh, decoration to make them look like a bee. Um, actually appeared. So the bee, the bee was not um, really there uh, any earlier than 1900. Um, this particular knife, it's, it's, a, it's just a brushed finished 440 uh, stainless. Um, it's, it's, it's really, you know, a, the, the classic Lyol shape and style uh, of sort of the old school. So typically these Lyol knives, you have to close them carefully because the knife uh, blade actually rests on the spring. There's a little hump in there and just past the tip the uh, the blade actually hits hits the spring so you want to close them carefully. Uh, there's there's an old saying about a, a quiet knife lasts longer I think is the translation. A um, little bit of file work here on the uh, on the spine of the blade. Um, you know there's no problem with the uh, with the blade actually resting on the uh, spring as long as you're careful closing it. So um, sort of a little um, lesson in you know, how the knives progressed from sort of the Spanish Navaja style to the, uh, the classic Lyol shape. And here, this, this was a not terribly expensive knife. It is, uh, you know, the, the Lyol knives are typically, um, you know, all handmade. The, uh, you know, the, the, blade, the blade grinding and stamping may be uh, mechanized. Um, and the this, this spring, you know, stamping out, but the uh, the handle scales are typically all hand filed and hand uh, curved and polished. Um, so you're you're getting you know some handwork even in a a, a fairly inexpensive uh, version. But this is a good utilitarian um, using knife that's light without the bolsters, um, but uh, still still elegant with the uh, 
with a nice smooth moosh on there.